When walking on a mountain road, if you come across a tunnel that you've never seen before, be sure to be cautious. Maybe this tunnel will lead to another world. Today's story is about John. In 2014, his small distillery had hit a bottleneck, so he and his friend, Chris, went to Guizhou to investigate. Their plan was to find a suitable cave in the mountains near the Qishui River to develop a niche cave-aged white wine that shared origins with a famous brand of liquor. However, following the route they had researched in advance and using navigation, they drove into a dead end with earth and mounds and dense vegetation on both sides clearly showing no signs of human activity. Suddenly, a person holding a red cloth appeared in the distance, shouting at them in a strange manner that made Chris notice that he seemed light and floaty. This frightened the two of them, causing them to turn and run. But as they ran, they realized something was wrong. The road they were on was different from the one they had taken, and there was a fork in the road leading to a tunnel they had never seen before. At this point, John and Chris realized something was wrong. The previous night, they had arrived in Guizhou and after checking into their hotel, they went to a roadside stall to try out Guizhou's famous grilled tofu. A crazy old man with tangled hair and beard came over to them, looking dirty and unkempt. When he saw Chris, he froze for a moment before getting very excited and running over, speaking in a particularly hoarse, emotional voice. Don't pee! Don't be! The stall owner, seeing this situation, chased the crazy old man away and apologized to John and Chris, saying that the old man had been coming every day for the past month, staring at the people eating there, as if looking for someone. He never accepted any food offered to him, but today he suddenly got very excited. The stall owner hadn't even finished speaking when the old man returned, kneeling in front of John and saying excitedly, Walk backwards through the tunnel, walk backwards through the tunnel. Don't save anyone else, only save him. He pointed at Chris as he spoke. The old man spoke gibberish and his words were slurred, but what was strange to John was that he was not speaking in Guizhou dialect but in a dialect from another region. However, his voice was very hoarse and difficult to understand, so John couldn't be sure. But this was just a minor incident. At the time, John and his friends didn't take it seriously. But the next day, after they entered the mountain, they really came across a tunnel that suddenly appeared. John couldn't help but think of the crazy old man they had encountered last night. At the time, they didn't think much of it because they hadn't passed through any tunnels on the way there. Right now, they must have taken a different mountain road. However, strange things happened again. After walking along this road for a while, they once again came to the Denon Road. Moreover, the person who had been shouting with the red cloth was already charging down the mountain. Now they could see clearly that this person with the red cloth was indeed a person, but their spirit was very agitated and looked a bit abnormal. Following the principle of better safe than sorry, John and his friends turned around and walked away. But on their way back, something even stranger happened. There was only the tunnel left. At that time, John was immediately plunged into fear and confusion, but Chris was not afraid at all. He said, You wait in the car. I have ways to deal with this situation. He happened to have a full bladder. After saying that, Chris got out of the car and started sprinkling water from the tunnel entrance as he walked inside. But as soon as he went in, he didn't come out again for more than 10 minutes. 
John honked the horn, but there was no response. However, the phone was answered. After the phone was picked up, John asked Chris. Where did you pee? Why haven't you come back yet? But the other end of the phone replied. Who are you? And then hung up. Moreover, the voice on the other end of the phone was clearly not Chris's. John was immediately panicked. He got out of the car and was about to go into the tunnel to see what was going on. But as soon as he got out of the car, someone grabbed him from behind. When he turned around, it was the person with the red cloth who had been very excited on the mountain just now. He was now holding John and gasping for breath, his voice hoarse as he said. Don't go! At this point, John was startled, but when he looked closely at this person, wasn't he the crazy old man whose hair was all tangled up last night? But he was not, because this person in front of him was obviously much younger than the crazy old man from last night, although his hair and beard were still tangled up, they were still black. Although his clothes had many holes, they had not decayed to the point of rotting. And this person did not have as many scars on his body and face as the crazy old man from last night. Could he be the son of the crazy old man from last night? But no matter what, John didn't want to provoke this mentally unstable person. He was about to leave when the person in front of him said something that shocked him. He claimed to be Chris, who had been waiting here for a long time for John to come back. This made John confused because Chris was a 200-pound big guy, while this person in front of him was as skinny as a monkey. How could it be possible? Also, Chris had only gone to pee for less than 20 minutes, so how could he look like this? However, when John saw the tattoo on the person's arm, he was stunned. It was exactly the same as the one on Chris's arm. At this moment, the person's breathing became normal, and he sounds like Chris as well. He told John that after he went into the tunnel to pee, John and his car disappeared, and his phone couldn't make any calls. He was trapped here and didn't dare to leave. At first, he stayed near the tunnel entrance and searched for wild fruits and water in the nearby mountains. But John never came back, and no one else passed by either. So he gave up waiting and started walking along the road. However, no matter how far he walked, he always ended up back here. Later, he realized that there was a problem with the road, so he went into the forest to find a way out. But he still ended up back here, and he had been trapped here for hundreds of days. He couldn't remember the exact number of days, but even if he did, John wouldn't have believed him. To prove himself, the person took out his phone from his bag and gave it to John. He said there was evidence inside. Before the battery died, he took many photos and recorded a lot of information. John was skeptical but took the phone and saw that it was the same phone that Chris used. He quickly grabbed a power bank from his car to charge the phone. But as soon as it turned on, a call came in, and it was from his own number. John was shocked and trembling as he answered the call, and he heard his own voice on the other end asking where Chris had gone. This made John even more suspicious, and he remembered the crazy old man's words from last night. Don't save anyone except Chris! He felt that this person in front of him was extremely strange, and he just wanted to escape. So he threw the things in his hand and quickly got into his car, closing the door and reversing. Because the old crazy man once said to walk backwards through a tunnel, the man who called himself Chris was momentarily stunned when John suddenly ran away. But he quickly realized that John was trying to escape and chased after him. However, he couldn't catch up. John was pressing down on gas with all his can, and he realized that he was heading back towards the tunnel. Without hesitation, John drove into it. Once inside the tunnel, John almost crashed into Chris who was urinating at the side of the road. John quickly yelled at Chris to get in the car and continue driving backwards through the tunnel. They kept going until they couldn't see the tunnel anymore, and then they finally stopped. John explained everything that had happened to Chris, who was very skeptical. He insisted on driving back to the tunnel to see for himself, but when they got there, the tunnel was nowhere to be found. After the incident, John and his friend asked the locals about the tunnel, but they all said that there was no tunnel on the mountain. When John showed them the dashcam footage as proof, they still couldn't see the tunnel. That night, they returned to the barbecue place and asked the owner about the old crazy man, 
but he seemed to have no memory of him or the tunnel. It was as if the whole thing had never happened. That's the end of the story. It's a mind-bending tale of a time trap that connects parallel dimensions. There are actually three Chris, the old crazy man, the young crazy man, and Chris himself. They exist in different time and space. The old crazy man is the Chris who has been trapped in a time trap for years. He got out of the car to urinate and when he returned, he found that John and the car were gone. He was trapped for decades until he found a way to escape by walking backwards through the tunnel. But when he finally escaped the time trap, he realized that he was already old and had missed out on so much time. He wanted to change everything, so he went back to the street vendor where he had eaten barbecue before heading to the mountain. He went to every barbecue stall on the street, trying to find his younger self before the incident. When he finally saw himself, he was so excited that he told himself not to urinate. He thought that this would change the course of events, but it didn't. So he went back to John and said, Walk backwards through the tunnel, don't save anyone but Chris. This sentence should have changed the future, and the old crazy man should have mysteriously disappeared. The young crazy man is the Schrodinger's cat in the story. He exists between existence and non-existence. He was trapped on the mountain for hundreds of days before he met John when the incident was about to happen. If John had saved him, then the Chris who was urinating in the tunnel would not have found John when he came out and would have been trapped in the time trap for decades, becoming the old crazy man. Then, he would have tried to change the course of events by going back to the street vendor. This would have created an endless time loop, and the young crazy man would have remained in the state of Schrodinger's cat. 